Here we are again. My car is ripped apart for, I reckon, the 15th time. Uh, the back of it, we're going to do the electrical system again. And why? Because we're going away in a week and a bit. So, yep, that means rip everything apart, try and add some more things to play around with. And just like, it's that holy grail of just making everything that little bit better. I'll talk through what I'm planning for this particular little build. You know, I'm getting serious. I even wrote myself a job card. Um, that's not something I usually do. But, um, all right, let's have a look. Uh, all the floors out, and you're gonna see some prototype parts in here. Just <laughs> glaze over it a little bit. They will be available one day, but yeah, we've got like a, a really big battery in here that's gonna be happening. There's a different compressor. Um, but really, I guess the star of this is, well, all the auto leveling stuff's been ripped out there, so that's all gone. Um, so I'm gonna redo all the air, totally different. Um, I do want to have um, an air outlet just basically through this emu wing and through that emu wing. So when I air up and down, I can just move the hose around to the other side and then it'll air up and air down um, automatically. Uh, I've got another thing for the airbags. This uh, Cymarine, we, we do a lot of Cymarine um, little displays and that's going to go probably up there and uh, GPO underneath PowerPoint. Um, but what we haven't done a lot of is the way we monitor them. So this is the standard sort of shunt that you get, and that tells you like the net result of how much um, current, you know, the car's using, you know, so the, in, the inverter, what's going in or out. Um, but it's a net result. So if there's solar coming in, there's um, the fridge going out, it nets at zero, you don't know what's happening. So I've got this other thing. This is a Cymarine quad shunt. Uh, Dominic gave me the heads up on this. I've been looking at it for a while and he's actually like, push me into buying one because he's got one for his car um, so you've got 54 shunts all 50 amps each so this in conjunction I've got five things I can monitor now so on the side marine it'll have five different things so it'll have say inverter uh, fridge lighting um, whatever else I can dream up I'm going to put one for the Anderson plug going to the caravan so I can see on here whether the Anderson plug is charging and I can do that through the app or I can look at it up there. I reckon that's going to be pretty cool and it will tell me what's happening with my battery and the inverter and all that sort of stuff too. I've come in early to like start, well I basically the only time I can work on my own car is between 7 and 8.30 every morning so I've come in early again and I've got oh just over a week to chip away at this to get it ready. I've got to swap rims and tyres for this trip. Um, towing with 37s sucks. Um, so I've got some, they're around here somewhere. Um, what are those ones? I wonder if this is it, I'm told they, <laughs> this is all the stuff that came out of my car. So there's like an inch lift. Here we go, this is what I'm going to be running. The vapors. See them? So um, big change, going for a black wheel, not gold. But I'm actually going to get a wheel that fits my car for once, opposed to me having to use wheel spaces or something else. And, hang on a minute. No, this isn't them. This has got Coopers. I'm not getting Coopers. I'm getting, I'm getting Yokohama MTs, which I was told came in. Anyway. Oh, found them because they only just got delivered. Here they are. Check them out. So we're going to try these tyres this time, Yokohama GO3s I think they're called, and oh, you can't really see the rim right there, oh no, oh nuts, <laughs> alright so um, 35 by 12 and a half, check out this tread, I've tried so many tyres now, um, it's time to test out the Yokohamas. So I've been running the Yokohama XATs, um, they're awesome. Um, going to run yeah the mud terrains this time and see what they're like so I can give like a bit of a review uh, cannot fault the XATs at all one little bit they're an excellent tyre um, I'm hoping the GO3s are going to be just as good uh, disclosure I got a trade price when I bought them like because I'm workshop that's about it um, same as all the other tyres I've ever bought so the BFGs that I took off um, they're probably 70% worn and um, in my book 70% is knackered because that's when the wheel wobbles start they are feathering a bit, so they had to go. Uh, tires I've used in the past, uh, Nitto's, uh, Mud Terrain, they were good until they weren't. Uh, and uh, Razors, um, I didn't have much luck at all with them. They lasted about 500 k's until I popped them, and I got wobbles at about 10,000. So again, totally not sponsored, 
but I really like the Yokohamas. That's what we're going to go again. Fast forward to, uh, what is it, Monday. So I came, I've been in every morning early. Uh, work Saturday, Sunday, well after Sunday, coming early this morning. Guess what, I've hit the turning point where I'm starting to put the car back together and I think I should show you around. I'll give you a full feature on it, all of this, how it works at the end, but have a look at this. Ended up uh, sneaking in the emu wing, another set of uh, Safri buttons in there. I haven't got the actual buttons right, but one's gonna be for my um, ARV air control for tires, airbags, uh, Wi-Fi booster, and that auxiliary one's gonna be for a pump um, for my water tank. And then we've obviously got the lights and stuff up here. Um, batteries all in, tidy. I've been wanting to clean this up for so long because we've had so many goes at it. Um, yeah, all the power points in, Pico's in. All got to program a couple of things still. Um, but I'm going to be able to see all the current of all my devices. I don't know if you can see that there. So I'll, I'll talk you through that a bit more in a minute. That's all looking neat. Let me point out what all that stuff is. All right. All right, I know this looks like a heap of wiring mess, but you should have seen it before the conjure. Oh my God. This is like fat, full of like a billion different wires. So solar controller, I am gonna put a solar panel back on, just a small one, probably a 90 watt Victron, just because I think that's gonna help when the car's parked up, just to keep the battery topped up. And that's powered to um, the start battery, the DCS80. Um, and I can pull some power out of it as well. Obviously the inverter. Um, then this is the um, Safri or Cymarine quad shunt. So that's a 300 um, amp shunt. And that gives you like a net result of what like the whole system is drawing. But this gives me ind individual channels so I can see what solar is going in and out, what my, um, well the inverter will be done by that one, uh, what my fridge cabinet's using, what the Anderson plug's going, and whatever I can't remember for that one. Um, but that all just looks nice and neat. Um, this is uh, called an RCDO for um, mobile applications. It's an RCD, so that goes up to the power point up there. And that was all certified the other day by the Sparky. I didn't really need a tank, but it was already there, so I've kind of put that in. Generally, I don't like the tanks, especially the, the ARB ones, because they're all sealed. At least this one's got like a pressure release here so I can like let water out of it if I want to but I think I can't believe that it's all looking neat uh, if you are the uh, electrical judgmental type this is my work it's not 4x4 DNA's work and I generally always are throwing things together just so I can get away on the next trip and I'm not the neatest but I've tried to put some effort into this if I had the guys next door do it they'd probably do a better job again but um, I guess the plan of this is to show people what can be done um, if you want to monitor all those things off your, um, like off your battery system and see what's happening and whether the caravan is being charged by the car through the Anderson and have the Pico there, um, that's what I want to show everyone what can be done, I suppose. And you can go and do it a bit neater than the way I did it. All right, I'm so excited. I'm going to put this car back together and it's going to look like a real car again. It's looked a mess for like two weeks now. Have a look at this, it's a car again. It really shows you how much you can put under the floor of these um, Y62s at a nice false floor. Now I've got all little nutserts for the fridge. Um, bolt that back in, the side drawer. Uh, put the water in, screw these in. It's happening, it's actually happening. I can't believe it. All right, it's beer o'clock, and that means it's time to just play, but I've got something a little bit special to show you now. Have a look at this. Reveal, great guy. Oh, yeah. Sexy. Look at that. That's a bit flash. One of a kind, TRX bonnet to suit Y62. All right, can we get on by 5.30, Steve? Yeah, right. Done. All right, let's do it. No, you're not. Let's do that, Bonnet. Do you want me to get the set for you, Darren? Thank you. You don't mind. Someone put these gas straight. Maybe three mils. Ooh. Boys up the front. Pretty. Woo! First, first fit. Muck around a bit more, but it's pretty good. 
tough. Like the colour. <laughs> <laughs> Work out the colour to paint it, yeah. All right, next morning now, the excitement of last night putting on was very cool, but now I've got to get serious about colouring this thing and talk, I should talk about it. So um, the, what we're doing here, Steve and I, uh, over Christmas holidays, we're talking about a project um, about cooling these vehicles down because they do get hot at times. Um, there's two parts to that, making it cooler when driving and towing, um, you know, if we're crossing you know, <laughs> middle of Australia like we tend to do. Um, uh, and that's where the bonnet will help with cooling. And I bet there'll be a heap of you to argue all sorts of things there, but this company called Blitz Bonnets that made the bonnet, that's all they do. They build bonnets for race cars to keep them cooler. And that's what this bonnet does. It does take air in the middle, but it vents out the back. So it's gonna push more in air down and it's gonna push more air up the glass. So it will cool it all down. Anyway. The second part of it is for full driving and Steve's got a project to do with thermo fans and everything um, that we're going to look at um, keeping the engine bay cool um, when we're not moving. But how cool is the look of it? So um, to get this done I had to buy a bonnet right, from Nissan, sent it to Blitz Bonnets. They then made um, like a, a foam mould and we went backwards and forwards on what that was going to look like. Then they clay moulded it, so this is like bespoke about as bespoke as you could get um, and then they made a mold from the clay mold to um, make a fiberglass bonnet and it weighs a few kilos it's so light so we've had a weight saving it's going to have a cooling effect um, like I don't own this design like if you want this bonnet as well you can go to Blitz Bonnets um, and have th that exact bonnet they've got the mold there so if you want it you're more than welcome to go and do that it's not sponsored or anything like that it's just I wanted a bonnet and I wanted my car to look different um, anyway, now, I'm going to take it off and send it to paint because um, I reckon we might be able to get this on before the weekend too. What I've noticed, this is funny, about myself, if I start working on the car two days before we go away and throw stuff on at the 11th hour, I put, it happens. If I'm a bit more clever and planning and start like two weeks earlier, like I did this time before we go away, what happens? Just more crap gets put on the car. It's still going to be like the 11th hour. I'll be picking this up lunchtime Friday, hooking the caravan up and going. Um, all right, let's see what happens next. I've got a few more things to talk to you about. Airbags and the walk around as well. And I don't know if you've been following, but I've been running two different types of airbags in the back, a prototype and another one. And I'm convinced the prototype is, um, it hasn't leaked one PSI from when I set it, it'll stay there, it'll be there three weeks and it doesn't leak. So um, now I'm going, I'm committing, we're putting two of them in. Oh, my product manager is gonna kill me. You cannot order this. Don't ring us up and ask for it because it's gonna be like six months, but I'll show you, I'll show you now. All right, here's the sneaky little thing. All right, like I said, don't, don't ring us about this yet, but this is um, a, a large airbag. I've got um, basically a screw on fitting, braided line. And then at the other end, if you've got onboard air, you've got a push-in fitting, like a quality push-in fitting on this side. Um, or if you need to go to a valve, you can do that on the back. That is not gonna leak ever and tested. But don't ring up about it yet. I'll let you know when it's ready because this is going to, I think, change the um, way we do airbags in, in Y62 patrols. It's gonna be so good. All right, sneak peek, one more. <laughs> Alright, it's the end of the day Thursday, we're only working a half day tomorrow, bonnet's not on yet, but I'm told that's coming uh, tomorrow so I can go away with it on. Uh, if I don't give you a walk around the car, like which is the electrical finished product, I'm not going to get a chance. I was going to wash it and make it all look mint, but I'm sorry, you're just going to have to have done as better than perfect. Uh, we added a solar panel on the top here, um, oh, there you can see it there, it's just a little 90 watt solar panel. I didn't need something massive because the bigger the solar panel you get, the heavier it is. And I just need, if I'm not driving my car for two weeks, sitting out the back, everything at run and just trickle charge and I don't have to, you know, worry about it too much. The Pico we'll talk about in a minute. Um, I will talk to you about the uh, air system. 
So that's the compy sitting down there, water tank. Uh, there's a pump inside that tank, which is kind of cool. All the charging is in the back of the fridge for everything I need to, to keep charged up and out of the way so it's not rattling around and falling all over the place and my drone's not going to get smashed when kept in there. Um, we've got air coming um, from my ARB air control system um, to both sides. So I've got one on the side of the fridge and I've got one on the side of the drawer so I can access that from either emu wing without having to open the whole back of the car up. Uh, I'll talk about the Pico a bit more in a moment. Um, then we've got some switches in here. So one's for the water pump. So if I press this one, I can grab water now and I don't know, hose the kids or the dog down. Uh, turn that off again. Air hose I leave permanently connected so I can just grab that, air down the tires. That's on the ARB air control. So I can, you know, drop to 15 automatically or back up to 42 automatically and easily accessible. Uh, Wi-Fi boosters the top one and this is how I can turn on and off the two ARB air controls so one's for airbags and one's for tires. Uh, I can do a little demo actually so on the app um, ARB air control app uh, essentially you just like type in what you want the airbags to set at up she goes there we go comp didn't even turn on the compress uh, the uh, tank took care of that want to drop it back down um, this is convoluted. I must say, if we're going to put this in a customer's car, onboard air is better from Airbag Man, but I'm a convoluted sort of person and I like apps, so this is why I've done it this way. Now, um, back of the fridge. We, we set out customer's cars nice all the time and mine always gets forgotten about. So I've spent some time, still going to do some programming, but now I can quickly have a look at um, any current that's being used and... I reckon I might show you this on the app in a minute. So don't worry about not being too focused here. I can see what the start battery is, the Dash 120 battery in the back. Um, and if I go on here, if we're on the right network, this is the Cymarine app. Um, put it like this so you can see it a bit better. All right, no, I don't want a demo. Um, so the only downside to this, you have to be on their Wi-Fi network. So now I'm connected to the Pico. No, I want to join the Pico. There we go. There we go. Go to the Cymarine. I should screenshot this so you can see it better instead of the clouds or whatever you're seeing here. There we go. And everything that I could see on um, the Pico, now I can see here. So if I'm sitting on the couch at home and I want to see what solar I'm getting in, uh, all of 0.1 of an amp right now, or what my fridge is using, if the fridge is turning on, if I'm seeing if the caravan's charging while I'm driving, I can see all of that right there. Uh, or maybe I just want to see what's happening with my lighting. So if I turn all the lights on now, um, so roof rack light on that side, that's dimmable roof rack light on that side, then I've got my Pico light up the top. I should now be able to see lighting which is the bottom left, 3.75 amps for every amount of lighting that I've got, which is on. So really, I'm liking how I can manage everything. Uh, even the induction cooktop, I'll be able to have a look how that's, what, how much current that draws. And I can just simply, so that clips on the end of here, by the way, but um, I can, yeah, just plug it in, switch it on, like, just like it's at home. So easy. Here we go, the full demo. So that all fits a nice little um, bag there. Switch on the system. PowerPoint's already on over there. Now, I'm just turned on. And away, if I had my frying pan there, I could start cooking away and having a look at what the Pico's using. So, oh, it's only using, <laughs> it's idling at five amps. So it's not using much at all, to be honest. I'm pretty stoked actually that the, the setup that we install in people's cars all the time, I've actually got it in my car now and appreciate it and use it. And I'm oh, so stoked with how it's turned out. I love it. Really cool. Just got to program a couple more things. Look over my shoulder. There it is. The bonnet's on, all painted up. We worked out the colour scheme. Um, I'll show you. Hang on. I'm pretty chuffed with it, I must say. I love it. Like the stance from the side. 
as tough as. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't have, so we're just about to go. We've let everyone go home early, it's I don't know, about one o'clock, uh, on the Friday before the long weekend. Uh, couldn't have done it without the help of the whole team. It's Bonnet's helps with that. George Cross the road who painted the Bonnet quick snap for us to get it on. And um, I guess I, this is my little opportunity. I'm gonna take a moment to thank you guys for watching these videos. Cause, and, and the people that support us at 4x4 DNA and Dash Off Road. This is how we get to go and um, live this amazing life, but go and find new things that we can just, um, I guess, uh, stimulate what can be done in the Y62 community. Um, there's a lot of things that we bolt to cars that don't work and go on the bin and they, they're failures. But the only way we can afford to do all that is the support that everyone gives us through Dash Off Road, to be honest. Um, so thank you. And as long as you keep supporting us, we're gonna keep inventing things for these cars, which just make them, like, make a good car even better. So again, thanks for watching. We're out, heading up the Flinders. I will see you next time on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I love that bonnet. That is so good.